What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. And today I am looking back at one championship's 162 card, uh, which went down uh, in, in uh, the morning slash noon time here over in Ireland, uh, but over in the Singapore uh, Indoor Stadium. Uh, Double header again from once. We're going to be looking at the first card here, the 162 card, um, headlined by John DeBella versus Pim Am Jang, uh, with a good few MMA fights in through it too. I'll give you a breakdown of all the fights that happened on it today. But um, overall, it was it was probably not as good as their recent cards, while still being a good card. There were some uh, nice finishes on it, some very, very good performances, especially, especially Reese McLaren's probably the, the standout uh, performer for me, but we, we will uh, we will obviously get to that. Uh, but yeah, all in all, a pretty good card, a pretty good way, I suppose, to start off uh, a massive weekend in the world of mixed martial arts with, obviously, the 2-1 championship cards with the massive UFC as well. And uh, yeah, very, very interesting. Whenever I start these uh, previews, or reviews even, I always like to kind of pick something out that's a little bit different from one championship, uh, or maybe even if when I do the PFL ones or the Bellator ones or whatever, uh, that kind of makes it either look something that makes it either, either better or something that makes it worse. And one thing that stood out to me tonight that, may, that actually makes one championship better, I think than almost every other promotion... They don't bring stats up in the middle of the fights. And if they do, it's it's rare and needed, maybe. But they don't. Like, you, you see in the middle of all the other promotions, you, you see it, it comes up and it's like, you know, Fighter A has landed 23 strikes, Fighter B has landed 19 strikes, whatever it might be. You know, the, the amount of control time or whatever uh, stat they think might be useful at that time. And one championship don't really do that, and I like that, and I think it goes maybe with their ethos of this being martial arts and this being about the actual fight itself, and you know we 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 kind of look at the judging afterwards and decide what that is, or we we will you know go through the stats afterwards uh, and and see the meaning of them. But when we're in the fight, we're in the fight, and do you know what I really really like that as someone who is a massive advocate for judging and all, I think. Uh, I, I think it actually should be separated from the fight at the time of the fight, uh, unless you are obviously the judge or unless you are the commission or whatever. But when you're sitting down to watch the fight, I think it can be, the stats can be deceiving a lot of the time and also unnecessary a lot of the time. And uh, to not have them in one championship, I hadn't even thought of it before because, you know, you wouldn't really think of it when it's, when it's not there. But today watching the card, it really kind of stood out to me because it was one fight. It, it was the sort of, I can't remember which fight it was, but I was in the middle of it and I'm thinking, this is the start of the fight where it's close at the end of the round. There's like 30 seconds left. And if this was the UFC, they'd probably pull up the stats and say, you know, Chris Weidman, 39 strikes, Luke Rockhold, 412 or whatever that round was with, <laughs> with Herb Dina. But, um, yeah, I, I, I really like that. And that's one thing I must mention because it pop, kind of popped into my head when I was watching the card. And I think it's, I think it's a good thing. And if you're watching maybe, you know, the watching back this card or watching the next cards, uh, which are coming up for one championship, maybe have a look at one fight and kind of be cognizant of it and see if it makes it better because it leads to less blabble and more talk about the actual punches, kicks, submissions, takedowns and whatever else being thrown, landed and executed. And that's what I want from my MMA. And I think that's what most people want from their, from their MMA. So, uh, that's very good from one. Do you know what as well? Michael Chiavello, I think he's improved so much. Like, uh, I think before it was, and, and you know, he still has his good night Irene and his, his things that he kind of uh, uses. But uh, he was, there was uh, this thing in MMA before and in other combat sports where a trend of kind of uh, commentators which were more cartoonish, um, which kind of had their sentences that they needed to get into every fight. You know, probably all, a lot of lads copying Mike Goldberg, if we're being honest. And Sheffield, I think, was was like that, but it was it, it was more like the, the kind of the, the scripted lines than anything else. I think he's gotten away from that an awful lot. I think he's very good. The end of the um, the Debella Zhang fight, I thought he was really, really good. And he's very good in all these kickboxing matches, I think, because he knows him so well. He seems to have a great interest in that. And, you know, me and myself, 
I wouldn't be, you know, an expert in, in who the fighters are or anything about it or definitely not the sport. And I think he brings that level of kind of <coughs> enjoyment of the sport and understanding of the sport and is well able to call it as well. So, you know, fair play. I, I think he's someone who's definitely improved at his job and definitely got a lot better. So from the commentary point of view, two things there, I, I would definitely... Uh, Definitely give a plus point to to one championship and all of that. And I like Mitch, Mitch Chilson as well. I think he's really good. He was another guy I maybe wasn't the biggest fan of at the start, but I've definitely warmed him and I think he's good. And the fact he's so close and he's, his knowledge of the fighters is probably second to none compared to any um, uh, commentator, co-commentator worldwide. And, okay, maybe it's a little bit easier because a lot of the one championship fighters come from, you know, the the, the same gyms or, or they come from a, a similar area. And so maybe he's trained with a lot of them are trained when they come in for the, uh, you know, the events when he's there for all of the events anyway. But still or not, he still has that knowledge and it's, it's really, really good. So, yeah, all in all, that's a quick take on, on, on some of the things that I, I wanted to mention. Uh, let's get into the cards. The cards started off with a fight. This must have been very late coming through because uh, I did my preview earlier on in the week. Uh, I did my betting preview only a couple of days ago and this fight still hadn't been announced. So it was uh, Rusan Emil Beck versus Ben Wilhelm um, in the in the uh, 185-pound welterweight division, which they have, which is kind of weird. Um, <coughs> I, th- I thought... Um, so it's Ruslan Imbek Ulu. Ruslan, I think he was really, really smart. Re- uh, such a smart fighter. Um, he, he tricked Wilhelm into going to the floor at the very start. Now, if people were watching it, he kind of grabbed a low clinch and kind of gave up the neck to act like Wilhelm was kind of doing a head and arm tr- uh, throw on him. And he kind of let him do it and then got his back. It was really, really smart. And, you know, it's this type of thing that Oh, we're thinking a lot this week about uh, you know the Oliveira Makacha fight, and thinking about how uh, you know jujitsu guys are, and that's probably maybe a bad example here. But how jujitsu guys get the floor? Let's say someone like uh, Mackenzie Dern, right? If she could give up someone a head and arm throw, just like let him head and arm throw her, and then pop out and take the back, wouldn't that benefit her greatly? You'd have to give up the position, give up a throw, maybe give up yourself getting hit hard into the ground, but you might win the position because of it, or you will win the position because of it. And um, Ruslan did that here, and I think he did it really, really well. In uh, as I said, ended up getting the back, and um, you know looked like he was going to get the finish for there. But Willem was strong. He ended up throwing him off. Um, then uh, Ruslan got a takedown of his own from a throw. Didn't let uh, Willem throw him this time. He actually got the throw. And he just kind of big brothered into him. He was just too big, too strong, too aggressive. And was just kind of taking the fight away from him. Took the back again. Um, he got up. Uh, did, did Willem. No quitting him whatsoever. Got the fight to the clinch, did Ruslan. Uh, he landed a load of knees in the clinch. Those knees were kind of nasty. Took the back again. This kind of pulled him down. And then just as the bell was about to go, sunk in the rear naked choke and got the tap. It was a real, you know, 4.58 of the first round. So it was a real, real late one. I thought the round was going in. I thought he was going to survive, but it wasn't to be. Um, almost had him a couple of times earlier. But uh, as I said, Wilhelm defended very, very well. Looks a strong guy as well and uh, was able to get out of it. So very, very good win for Ruslan there. Moves to uh, moves to 19 and 3, I think, in his career or something like that so uh, yeah a, a top performance there for him and he's definitely someone who you know with that many fights you'd have to put him towards the top of that division you, you know you look at Saldic here coming in um, and he he's I know he's fighting coming up soon and he has a name already but a couple more wins and, and it could be a big name like that and you know he lost to Lee Jang last time out back at when the start of this year so uh, but he had, it was on a great win streak as well uh, before that he lost a fight, fight a couple of fights before that but was on a great win streak before that and fought a, a, a few names as well so be interesting to see where he goes from here uh, the next fight in the card in was a Muay Thai fight between uh, Dennis Purich and Tagir uh, Kalilov. Um, Purich very, very aggressive to start with. Tagir, uh, Tagir took the center. Um, 
but it was only short term. Purish knocked him down late in round one. Round two, Purish was landing better, but I thought he got very, very tired in the middle of the round. Tagir won the round with late barrage against the fence, I think. Purish looked badly hurt uh, after that late barrage, and in the third in, Tagir dominated it. But Purish won. Um, it... Uh, it, I, I think it, it was probably a draw I don't think they said it maybe they did say it, maybe I missed it but I think it was probably a draw and uh, and they went back and kind of count back and they used the who, who you know who landed the most most immediately impacted full strikes obviously in a Muay Thai match and uh, that was Purich based in that knockdown in, in round one but it's weird because you know Kalilov won most of that fight he won the second round he won the third round um hurt him really really badly in this uh, at the end of the second round was it as big or was it as hurtful as the knockdown I would say um, I don't know maybe it's debatable but I, I would say comparable and in fact he won you know what 70% of the rest of the fight yeah I think it was uh, I think it was interesting I don't I'm not a big fan of not having draws, to be honest. Uh, if it's a draw, it's a draw. Let it be a draw, you know? If a, if a fight's a draw, let it be a draw. So, uh, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of that, but look, that's the, the rules they have. And uh, and Purich ended up winning that one there. Uh, the next one then, Artem Belak versus Leandro Issa. Tremendous fight. Very, very high-level stuff altogether. Um, Issa started so fast and started really really well got the clinch got the takedown immediately looked really really strong into the mount almost at the arm bar I think what was it called the, the S S mount or something like that I don't know what this jujitsu stuff uh, <laughs> but he defended it well uh, did Belak landed some big elbows into half guard in passes into mount again got that very very high mount again the arm bar again but Belak quickly out and he himself landed on top um Landed a couple of shots, but Issa got the omoplata to get himself on top again. Uh, all in the first round, that was. Round two, Belag landed a big right hand. Kind of shocked off the clinch, and it looked like things were going good for him. Lands the knee. Uh, then Issa kind of struck into the clinch. Belag landed on top, but the arm bar again into the omoplata to sweep for Issa. Landed him on top. Mount again. Arm bar again. And this was a full-on arm bar this time. Got out of it, uh, but it was it was like the full, it, it was the arm bar, you know, the Rousey, uh, who which Rousey one? No, it wasn't Rousey's in Ghana, but the one where she, you know, you put it under your arm and you pull back the arm bar. That wasn't enough. Then it was the straight, you know, arm bar to to grind to to belly button type of one. Um, wasn't able to finish him either. Got the back then uh, after he got out. Um, took the back, landed massive, massive ground and pound. Did Malal, and it looked like it was an insane comeback uh, on the uh, on the cards in because he, I thought he was going to get him out of there at the end of that second round, but um, he says survives and he kept going uh the start of the third round Balak landed five or six and maybe maybe I'm understating that like after it looked like the fight was over with Issa with the armbar it really really did it looked like it was full on and when he got out he got that back and that mad that, that ground upon was huge it was it was an insane round like, like up there with it, it could have been a comeback in a year round of the year type of one if maybe it had, it had ended but maybe fall short uh, because it, it didn't get to finish but a, a mad kind of back and forth there uh, and then as I said started the third round Balak um, lands five or six right hands to start it off looked like it was uh, it, he was going to get the finish landed big McGregor elbows in the clinch it was almost finished and Herb Dean was kind of standing there and not really even looking at it <laughs> I was like uh, Herb you know I, I was taught to fight was going to be stopped but it wasn't and Issa almost immediately landed on top because Balak kind of got tired there was blood all over the place so they kind of slipped out and got back up Balak right hand again um, Issa pulled guard back up then again after some ground and pound lovely Issa jab but were really really tired uh, at the end of the fight and uh, Balak ended up taking the unanimous decision but God almighty at, at the midpoint of the second round it surely didn't look like that was going to happen uh, he looked like he was dead to rights he looked like the fight was over after after losing the, the first round as well in my opinion um, but he came back almost got the finish and then he won the uh, the third round as well but as, as we know it's the fight he scored as a whole in one championship so it's a little bit different but yeah really really fun fight there and uh, you know 
I wouldn't mind. Do you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch. I don't think they'll do it, but uh, I, and there's a few fights on this card. I wouldn't mind seeing rematches, but Black. I, I told you in the preview, um, his ability to kind of strike fearlessly because of his wrestling, because of his ground game, it makes him really good. In this fight, it didn't really show because Issa was so good on the ground as well. You know, it's kind of uh, <laughs> a precursor to what we might get for Makachev and Oliveira, but however, um, I think Balak will be better in future against people who aren't, you know, I think Issa is a world champion in jiu-jitsu, isn't he? So I think he will be better in future. Uh, not that he wasn't good today, and he won today against someone very, very good, but tough matchup for him, you know, styles make fights, and this was a definitely a very, very tough style matchup for uh, for Balak, but he came through it and won. Next fight in the card in was back to MMA, uh, and it was Echo Ronnie Saputra against Y2K, and again... Echo Ronnie got the first round submission. I think he's seven first round finishes in a row, almost all of them submissions. And he looked, you know, it, do you know what? I, I don't know that he looked as good as he has in the past. Um, even physically, he looked, I thought he looked a little bit off coming into the fight. Uh, but still, he got he got it done and he, I'm sure he'll be better again next time. But um, immediately, Echo Ronnie went across the cage, got a big do- double leg, big takedown. Jumped on the heel hook, and that was basically that. There wasn't much. There wasn't much more to it. It only went two minutes and sixteen. A lot of that was holding him against the cage, trying to get that that takedown. Um, you know, Echo Ronnie is a, v- and I said it about uh, Y2K in, in the preview. He once he is taken down, he's actually very good defensively, very good at getting back up. But there was there was just nothing here. He fell back on that uh, heel hook. Uh, when you know Y2K was doing his best, but there was really nothing he could do. And you know, Echo Ronnie at that 135 pound class, there's a few guys there now at the moment, and, and I think he will be uh, I think he'll be quickly vaulted up that division because he's exciting, he's good, and I think he, he's a, do you know what? He's a cool name as well, Echo Ronnie. What a great name, Echo Ronnie Saputra. It's just a great name, uh, but uh, yeah, very, very good performance as well. Not much to review in it because it didn't go very long, basically just the takedown and the heel look, which was very, very impressive. But um, yeah, definitely a guy to keep an eye on and definitely a guy we need to look forward to in the future. Uh, back to my tight end for the next fight, Jimmy Viano uh, against Nicholas Larson. An, an interesting one. A- again, Viano, clearly the better fighter, I thought, early. Very technical, defensively, very, very good. Uh, in the second round, though, Larson made it dirty. Vino got a cut over his left eye. He said it was from a headbutt. Not sure if it was or not, but after that, Larson landed a massive right hand uh, to probably take that round. Larson, a big right hand again in the third, not giving him much time, lots of clinch. Um, Vino won the fight, and this is this is scored as, you know, 10 by must system. Not sure I totally agree with that now I'm no uh, might I judging expert or anything like that but I thought this was pretty like pretty clear cut Larson 2 and 3 Vino 1 and 29 28 but no indeed uh, Vino won it so maybe you know I don't know as much about Muay Thai as I do about uh, MMA judging anyway without a shadow of a doubt. But uh, yeah, overall, a good fight anyway. And you know, good performance uh, from Larson. I, I enjoyed what he did. Um, obviously, a, mo- a better, more technical fighter Fino was, but Larson, you know, I suppose put him put himself on the line, put his body on the line to try to win the fight. I thought he did, but it was it was definitely it was definitely close. Um, Back to MMA then for the 125 pound fight between Gustavo Ballart and Alex Silva, and this was a this was a fun fight. You know, I, I told you in the lead up that um, Alex Silva will do nothing but jujitsu, and I look, I was right mostly, but his striking did look better. They were saying in the commentary as well, and I, I I'm glad they did say it because a lot of I'm sure a lot of people watched it and maybe saw. Maybe they've seen a Silva see, uh, f- um, fight once or twice before, but maybe, you know, wouldn't remember him totally or wouldn't have done the analysis like I, I did last week and, and look at what he did. And they, they made a point of saying that he's striking and improved an awful lot, and it definitely did. Uh, but it was more kind of towards the, the middle or latter half of the fight. The fight started off with a lot of overhands from Ballard. And you know Ballard, you know, four foot eleven, small squat, Powerball um, against Silva, who was, who was only 5'4", but looked like a giant in there. Um, as I said, a jiu-jitsu guy as well. But the overhands from Bellarta start, started off. Even early, uh, Silva looked a bit, little bit better on the feet. He was landing a few jabs and stuff from range. Maybe it's 
easier to look like you've a good jab against someone you know five inches smaller than you when you yourself are only five four it looks even bigger Silva did pull guard pretty early he look attempt Ballard pulled out um, uh, cl- clinched in from Ballard from Hoyle Silva pulled guard again he look again got out and as he was getting out he caught the other leg and it looked really really good it looked ending a lot of struggles in that first round Ballard defil- defending defending defilling prolonged heel hook attempts uh, but he survived second round pulls guard again uh, Ballard got into full guard and he was a little bit better here landed a few shots but got back up on the feet Ballard I, th- I thought it was clearly better um, while Silva did it was clearly better than Silva while Silva looked better than Silva did before um, exchanges at the end of the round Ballard's left hands were probably the best of what we saw there in the third again Ballard landing but Silva lands a wheel kick um, and opens up with even more strikes lands a lovely hammer fist Artem Lavov style right down through the middle Silva got a takedown but quickly back up Ballard didn't get a late takedown, almost caught in the guillotine, but uh, but he really wasn't. Another fight I think could have gone either way. Uh, Ballard ended up taking the, the split decision, I think it was, and uh, that makes a lot of sense. A very, very close fight. I thought both guys landed well, both guys did well. Uh, I picked Ballard coming in, but I, do you know what? I probably would have given it to Silva for the closeness of those heel hook attempts uh, and that, that wheel kick that seemed to hurt Ballard. I don't think Ballard landed anything that hurt Silva as much as that uh, shot hurted him. So, uh, very interesting fight there. Back then to uh, a kickboxing fight, the first kickboxing fight uh, of the night, Konstantin Russo versus Islam uh, Mutaziev. Uh, very close first round. Lusu looked, uh, or sorry, Russo looked clo- looser. Uh, that's that's a hard thing to say. Russo looked looser on the outside. Um, Islam was stoic, and he didn't really throw enough uh, in that first round. And the same again in the second. To be honest, Russo pushing the pressure. Um, nice left hand from Islam at one stage and landed one left hook, and it was. We we saw more of in the third round, but in the in the second round, it's kind of all he threw. Way better though from from Islam uh, Murtazev in the third round than a four or five lefts head kick from Rusu late fun late exchanges. Not a classic, I would say. Rusu got the win there, and he deserved it. Um, then we had the top two fights, which were really really good and really really interesting uh, I told you coming in that this Reese McLaren Winston Ramos fight was a, a two two BJJ guys it'll probably be 15 minutes on the feet and McLaren will win because he's better striking now I was <laughs> I was more than 66% right I would say because it only went to 10 minutes McLaren was better on the feet we didn't see much of anything on the ground just the one two from McLaren early were just money he was just landing them over and over and over and over again as uh, Chevelle called them one two kangaroo down, down the middle from McLaren and I suppose he's allowed to say that because uh, he's an Aussie as well but I, yeah, no, we're, all, we're all the one and um, Ramos was uh, he was just too slow he was just too, that, that was the end of the story uh, couldn't close the distance Reese was hitting slipping doing really well huge left took from Reese late uh, and then an even bigger right hand after it into mount but the uh, but the round ended there dominant first round from uh, from Reese McLaren in the second Ramos do you know what he looked a little bit longer and he was obviously more defensive in that second round um, he changed McLaren changed to Sopa didn't have massive success but it was smart because when he changed back he did have a lot more success cutting off the cage really well it helped him a lot that was the key I think to, to the to this fight not turning into a close fight in the second round if you get me the leg kicks landed a big spinning kick and that one two down the middle again went to the end of the round and um, Hamas was getting up off his stool to get back and then he didn't get up and he just sat down and they were like, oh, what's going on here? And they showed it and he had a massive swollen foot. So it looked like he broke his foot. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm no x-ray machine, but <laughs> it looked like he had a broken foot and uh, he couldn't continue. So yeah, fair enough. He, he pulled out uh, and, uh, and McLaren won the fight. But he was he was going to win that fight anyway. He really was. He was dominant. He was clearly better. I didn't see a way back for Winston Ramos, if I'm being honest. And uh, yeah, Reese McLaren looks a threat now in that division. He called out the champ, um, who I believe is fighting coming up very very soon, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that should that you know that'd be a fun fight. He says he's been ranked at number five for a good while, and uh, you know move up that division is probably a, a good thing for the the whole competition, because uh, or, or the whole promotion even because he is very good and. Uh, very uh, a very interesting watch and in the main event 
what what a what a matchup this was for the vacant flyweight kickboxing um world title I, I just kind of wish I was talking to my guy Eno Neal as well who's been on the show with me a few times we were both kind of saying God I, I wish this was in the smaller gloves because it would have been absolute you know bananas altogether if it, if it was in the smaller gloves but anyway um uh, PMM Jang the, the fighting rooster as they call him against Jonathan DeBella an absolute mad pace from the start Jang looked great uh, at the start just so fast almost like one of the fastest people I've ever seen fighting in my life uh, looked powerful too but DeBella grew into it walked forward uh, and landed fighting out of the southpaw stance fight landed that straight right or sorry straight left towards the end of the fight or the end of the round uh, probably didn't do enough to win it but uh, came on well uh, in the end after I wouldn't say a slow start it was just a really fast start from Zhang and he dominated the first you know 70-80% of that round again in the second round Zhang started fast but Debella came into it much quicker here didn't leave it till the last you know 30-45 seconds or whatever it was mad exchanges in the last minute of the second round ball landing uh, backhands ball landing big big shots in there um, leg kicks were the story of the third round because they were just spamming them leg kick after leg kick after leg kick from both guys in the first maybe minute and 20 of the round uh, lots of body shots then landed a, a few including a few kicks and they were just trading late Zhang slipped from a high kick midway through but the high kick still looked very good I wonder though did it not maybe score as highly because he slipped and I think it could have been in the fourth it was the Bella's high kicks that were the standout thing to me and this was the first time in the fight where I think um he was like clearly winning if you get me but that got him tired I thought he was very tired in the middle of the fourth Zhang won the midsection around the Bella came back late so again a close round there uh, I really uh, these rounds you know with the, and these guys are so small and so fast it's hard to know who's winning I leave that to the experts I'm not gonna, I, I don't even know what my score is to be honest I thought it could have been a draw at the end of it but anyway we had the fifth round close but Zhang was seemingly landing harder um Nice check left hook he landed, and the Bella. It was. It looked like he was kind of, you know, maybe on on the backward foot here. It looked like Zhang was maybe going to take, it. and then he lands a massive left high kick knockdown, and um, the rooster got up. He, <laughs> he had the cock crew in the morning, and the rooster, the rooster stood, and uh, he uh, he survived, and he came through it really well. You know, Debella said at the end, if he had had another minute, he would have finished him. I I I probably don't agree with that to be honest, because the rooster was so tough, um, and survived towards the end of that round. Uh, but in the end, he lost, and uh, Debella won it. Uh, I thought it was another one that could have been a draw. It was a unanimous decision for Debella and, uh, you know, a big win for him. He's very emotional afterwards. His father was a, a former um, world kickboxing champion, you know, representing Italy, representing Canada and New York as well, he said. So, uh, you know, that's a great fan base to have the three of those places. But a fantastic, uh, fantastic stand-up fight. And uh, one that uh, if you missed, uh, you probably should uh, go back and and watch. So, yeah, all in all... Uh, I, I enjoyed the top two. That's the most important thing, I, I suppose. The two, probably two best fights of the night. Two best, look, the best fight of the night was probably the main event. The best performance of the night was probably Reese McLaren uh, in the co-main event. And after, you know, uh, that that's the main thing, I suppose. Echo Ronnie as well, very, very good. L really looking forward to seeing what Palak does uh, in the future as well. But all in all, yeah, as I said, a uh, pretty enjoyable way to start off the weekend in the world of mixed martial arts. Keep it locked to Shardog.com for the rest of the weekend. There's obviously going to be a lot of stuff up there uh, the results the play by play the whole lot so keep it here on Shardog.com and I'll be here as well but for now I will say goodbye signing off Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com and I'll see you all next time